what is going on alpha males saddle up for another episode of the alpha male podcast the podcast where we talk about what it means to be an alpha male the right way with god at the center god is number one i hope that i keep him as number one in my life and everything that i do including this podcast so if you're man enough for the alpha male podcast Let's get into let's get into the topic we're going to be talking about today and that's going to be pan fishing. Now a lot of you men may have may not have grown up with a father that fished or grandfather that fished or ever fished. Pan fish is kind of a common vernacular, a common term for a fish that'll fit in a pan, good for cooking. It's kind of a generic term for a lot of different kinds of fish and we'll get into that in the body of the episode today normally i plug in a bio i'm not going to do that today because most of my bio that i mention talks about me as a combat veteran of the marine corps and the army and police and oh it's all well and good that's got nothing to do with fishing so i grew up fishing a lot my father is a commercial fisherman his father before him was a commercial fisherman so guess what i did growing up commercial fishing i also fished a lot for fun there wasn't much to do where i grew up talking about on the Chesapeake Bay, but it has a lot of really good fishing. The ocean, the bay, the freshwater ponds and streams, it is an amazing place for fishing. Although I might have been a very poor kid growing up in the south, and I mean very poor, like no phone walking down to the nearest center of town to use a payphone, no air conditioning kind of poor, we had world-class fishing and I got to be a part of that. Again, I'm not going to talk much about commercial fishing today or deep ocean fishing. I would fish for things like tuna. Father fished a lot for shark and other things. But today we're going to be talking about panfish. Grew up doing a lot of freshwater fishing and bass fishing and pan fishing, which is the topic of today's episode. So I'll start transitioning out of the bio. Just know that I've fished ever since I was a young, young boy. Started fishing when I was a young boy. I did very well in school, but I often skipped school to go fishing. That gives you an indication of how much I liked it. Anyway, transitioning out of the bio, if you want to thank me for my service and you genuinely like the podcast, scroll down, hit some stars if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify. If you wouldn't mind leaving a review if you're on iTunes, just write a quick review. Take you probably less than three minutes. And if you like this content, I'll put a link to goodshepherdtraining.com if you want some more. Anyway, transitioning out of the bio, pan fishing. What is a pan fish? Well, we talked about that a little bit. It's colloquially a vernacular term of fish that fit in a pan. But there's a lot of different species. A real common one would be bluegill. There's bluegill, there's pumpkin seed, there's warmouth, there's all manner of that kind of close-knit family. A lot of people will just call them all bluegill, but they're different species. They're all about the same size. Well, again, about the size that would fit into an average size frying pan. And they are good eating. They are good to eat, which is one of the big reasons we're talking about this today. Another real common one called the panfish would be crappy. And despite the name crappy or not crappy to eat, they are quite delicious. And they're quite, some circles consider quite the game fish. A lot of people a lot of people really like fishing for crappie more than a lot of other fish. You know you got people that just want to catch marlin and some people that just want to catch tuna and some people that just want to catch bass. You got a whole subset of people that just want to catch crappie. They're like, "Look at this giant, you know, I don't know, pound and a half crappie that I caught." And that's cool if that's what they're into. That's great. Crappie are really cool. For the size that they are, they are quite the predator. They are a beautiful fish. They're kind of a salt and pepper, mostly salt with a little bit of pepper flake thrown in. They have really gnarly teeth. They're quite the predator and a lot of fun to catch and they kind of punch above their weight class as far as fighting. So I can see why people love them. Also, it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take a $40,000 bass boat to catch bass either. But really, there's a low barrier to entry for all these fish. There's other fish less common that you might consider panfish, yellow perch, and things like that depending on where you are in the country. But panfish. If you're looking for a good, healthy, sustainable food source, this is probably it. Now, 
probably the most expensive part about this that you actually need to catch panfish, sadly today, is the fishing license. In most places, you are required to pay the government to catch fish. And I'm not going to get... That's all I'm going to say about that. You have to pay the government to catch fish. But once you buy your fishing license, that might be the most expensive part of catching these. And maybe if you don't live within walking distance, the gas that's going to be required to drive and catch said fish. But catching these fish can be done and has been done for a long time on just a cane pole. If you live somewhere or drive by somewhere that has bamboo, you can make a pole pretty easy and catch panfish. Let's talk a little bit about the bait to catch panfish. Just like with most other fishing, you're going to have your two main categories, your actual bait and your artificial lures. Actual bait for panfish one of the great things about it is it can be super cheap. One of my favorite baits growing up that we used to just slay panfish on is just regular old bread. White bread. Like, I don't know what it is with inflation now, but the kind you used to be able to get for like a dollar, a dollar, less than two dollars. A whole loaf of bread. I'm talking like that cheap white wonder bread. And you don't just rip a piece off and put it on the hook. What you want to do is get it and ball it up super tight. As dense as you can possibly pack it in a little ball and put that on the hook. And this is an art form all its own, but just looking at a hook and looking at the bait and figuring how to put it on there so that there's not too much exposed, but there's enough to catch the fish. That's really hard to do in an audio format, but once you, and you'll get that trial and error if you get doing this, but Literally bread will a lot of times just slay a lot of panfish. I've never, I don't think, caught crappy on it or anything like that, but your bluegill, your warmouth, your pumpkin seed, things like that, it should do just fine. Another real good one is cheese. So next time you bought a block of cheese and you open some and it starts to get real hard or whatever, if you can, don't throw it away. Maybe throw it in the freezer till next time you're going fishing. Take that cheese, especially the hard parts, and cut it up into little chunks, and hopefully you can get that on the hook without splitting it apart. The hardest part about fishing with that cheese is keeping it on the hook, but it'll do well for panfish. And then your more traditional, your just worms, crickets, grasshoppers, little baby minnows. Those obviously will work. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, you may not know, but those work great. They're just a lot of times you have to go buy them, and they're expensive, or you have to catch them. And in today's modern world, you may not have the time. If you live somewhere where you live on a creek and you can just, you know, throw out a minnow pot, that's great. Throw out a minnow pot and catch minnows and fish with minnows. That's fantastic. But, you know, a lot of us don't have the time for that. So, again, bread and cheese. Hot dogs work fantastic. Literally, a hot dog, if you cut it up into small enough chunks, you could fish for a day and do very well and catch more fish than you can probably eat with a hot dog. So again, pan fishing a great low barrier to entry. All of those things I've done very well on. Now let's talk about artificial lures. There's a lot more than I'm going to cover here, but there's a few basic categories for pan fishing. Now, I will say that crappy and bluegill all that family, they can get quite aggressive and attack much bigger baits. And I have accidentally caught them on, I believe like a six inch, not an exaggeration, with a giant hook worm I was fishing for bass. I have done that. I've caught them on big full size bass lures. But again, you're not trying to catch these by accident. You're targeting them. I would say a general rule is quarter ounce or smaller for your weights. And hook size, if you don't know hook size, is kind of like shotgun gauge or shotgun pellet size. The bigger the number, the smaller the hook. I would say really your 8s, your 10s, your 12s. That size hook is really what you want here. But just like we talked about in our best all-around fishing setup, if you want to check out that episode, Lures Original Rapala, fantastic. It will catch almost anything. And Sunfish and Crappy are no different. Another whole category or your soft baits. A lot of times people call them soft plastics. They're more like a soft rubber if you're not familiar with the term. Little soft plastic baits that are artificial that look like a real thing or resemble a real thing in the water. They literally make little what they're called crappy baits. Things that look like little helgramites, little bugs, little flies, tiny crawfish. There's, you know, take your pick, little tiny worms. 
One of my favorite baits is just a small, I like white or salt and pepper spotted skirted double tail grubs. But that might be something harder to find. Just a regular white or I like white because almost in any environment there's going to be a minnow with a white belly. It stands out pretty well and these generally are not shy fish. Just a small, it's not super ultra cool, but just a little tiny quarter ounce jig head with a white grub. I don't know what a grub is if you're not super familiar with fishing, look it up. But just a small white grub. Got the little curly tails they spin in the water. You can fish those like a jig, bouncing them off the bottom. You could throw them out and reel them straight in. Generally not a very good tactic, but you can catch fish like that. They're super easy. They're super cheap. If you're fishing in submerged logs or timber and you lose one, it's not a big deal. It's not like losing a five or ten dollar, you know, crankbait. Get a whole package of those, a package of jig heads, and literally fish. Any of the soft plastics, like I said, the ones that look like little little crawfish or crayfish, depending on where you're from. Grubs are kind of the classic. They make ones that look like little minnows. Really take your pick on those talked about the original Rapala, but any of those little tiny crankbaits. I'm talking about tiny, I'm talking about, I'd say inch and a half tops. Inch and a half in that area and smaller. Now we talked about the best all around fishing setup in that other episode. I may link it in this one or just connect it. But if you're talking about specializing for panfish, go ultra light and go smaller. You can still stay with that five and a half foot, six foot, rod but i'd say instead of going medium action go ultra light action because again you're catching smaller fish pan size you want to be able to feel them if you're fishing in real thick dense cover like creek banks with stuff over top of you you might even want to go smaller you know five five foot rod ultra light another real common bait are spinners usually for this you're talking inline spinners if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's usually just a treble hook with some kind of lead sinker in the center, maybe some feathers on it, and a little shiny spoon on there that spins when you cast it. A little tip for these, if you're going to use these most of the time, use a swivel so you don't get a bunch of knots in your line. But they can work quite well, especially if the water temperature's right and those fish are super active and you are, you know, dealing with aggressive, fast-moving fish. Those inline spinners can work quite well. And again, to reiterate, the beautiful thing about pan fishing is if you already have a license, if you've already paid for that, and you already have fishing stuff, this is a cheap, affordable way to have a sustainable amount of food. Usually, I'm not familiar with really any limits. I'm sure someplace somewhere there is. Maybe on crappy, but on most pan fish, you can just catch them. Check your local laws, make sure there's not a season or something like that on bluegill, but in general, there's not. Most people want to be in their fancy bass boats and catching bass, and I love catching bass. In fact, this episode was going to be about bass fishing, but that's such a big topic. It was not going to be like a short episode. I wanted this to come out on Sunday. I figured a lot of people might be sitting around looking for something to do on Sunday or maybe fishing anyway on Sunday. Also, if you want to get kids into it, a lot of times you get into a pocket of fish you can catch a bunch of fish. Fishing can be quite boring for young kids if they're just sitting there not catching anything for hours. This is a way that with minimal equipment and minimal attention span, they can catch fish. And again, a good sustainable food source for you, for your family. A good lesson, I think, to teach kids where food comes from. Also, quite a bit less traumatizing when you're dealing with, you know, taking care of skinning and gutting and things like that on a mammal for a young kids sometimes that can be a little bit much a fish is a little bit easier barrier to entry on that and depending on the age of the kid they may not even care but you know scaling and flaying a fish generally is not that big of an issue also for you if you've never killed anything and eaten it with your own hands like shooting a deer or something you want to get into that world This is about as easy as you can get. So I am going to go like bare minimum here. If you are a man listening and you've never fit, you've never put a hook on a line. You've never put a hook in the water. You've never baited a hook, but you want to get into it. Let's talk about that. So go, you know, 
should look at your local laws and all that stuff. But literally, go find a piece of bamboo if you know where bamboo grows in your area. Get a six to eight foot long piece of bamboo. One with a base that's an inch, inch and a half thick. You want to cut it off at the top so it's about as thick as your index finger. You want to strip all the limbs off of it. Get it as smooth as you care to get it. Now you're going to need some fishing strings. You're going to have to go to a store for this. Just regular old monofilament line. For panfish, four pound test, six pound test is probably fine. If you have something else, it probably will work fine too. But actual just monofilament cheap fishing string. Now if you want to be like a pro at this, don't just tie it at the end. You're going to start at the base and you're going to make some kind of loop with like 550 cord or some other string and kind of make a way that attaches up the pole so that the stress is distributed fairly evenly on the pole. If you don't know what you're doing, just find a good secure way to attach that line to the end of your cane pole. Again, this is how people fish for a long time with a cane pole. And the fish have not gone to Harvard or Yale. They haven't figured out that this is an inferior way to fish. If you do it right, you can still catch fish like this. You may have a bunch of fish in here. You may want to fish like this just for the nostalgia of it. Now, there's two ways to fish. Fishing from the top and fishing from the bottom. Now, I was recently taking my beautiful wife fishing, and she asked about this when I said it. I thought it was fairly self-explanatory. Fishing from the top with a bobber. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a bobber. Again, if you're trying to go cheap, bobbers probably are very inexpensive. But you know what is a bobber? A stick. That's fishing from the top. Suspending the bait from the top of the water. Fishing from the top. Or a sinker. Again, sinkers are not prohibitively expensive, but you don't have to buy a sinker. What makes a good sinker? A washer. And you can probably find any number of other things. Rocks don't work that well because they're kind of high, hard to tie on a line. It's a washer if you have one laying around the house. An extra washer. Let's say a bolt or something. But if you're going for panfish, it should be fairly light and, light and easy. And of course, you're going to need the hook. Now, if you're a brand new to fishing, this might be the hardest part. You can't just tie a regular knot on a hook and expect it to stay. This is really hard to do in audio format. One of the things I love, I think I mentioned it in the Manly Skills episode... Who knows how many knots I know how to tie? A lot. And a lot of those are fishing knots because that monofilament clear fishing string can be quite hard to hold knots. So look up somewhere on your phone something simple fishing knot. A tripolymer knot, a snell knot if you're looking them up. But you don't just want just a regular knot that you're thinking of, like a pretzel knot. You don't want that to tie your hook on. You're going to need an actual fishing knot for this. So look up knot and practice it and tie your hook on. You're going to want what's called a leader. And you're going to have to experiment with this. Even me, when I go fishing, almost every time I'll experiment to see what the right amount of leader is. But what you're going to want to do is, let's say you have your bobber, the thing that bobs in the water that suspends the bait off the top of the water. You're going to want, let's say, anywhere between 6 to 18 inches of line and then your hook and then your bait on your hook. Bobber's probably the easiest way because you literally have a visual indicator when something's biting that. You'll see that bobber bob up and down. But a lot of times fish won't bite off the top. Fishing from the bottom, you want to have that weight and then a leader. You may do less on this. You may do just an inch or two. You may do as much as 18 inches or more between that and the hook and the bait on the hook. And if you're fishing from the bottom, you're going to Put that down so that your line is tight. You want to have tension on that line in most cases. And you want your finger on that line. So that you can feel when that fish starts nibbling or taking that bait. Sometimes it's super obvious they just grab it and they're hooked. Sometimes you have to feel when they're nibbling on it and actually set the hook. Meaning yank up on the rod to set that hook in that fish's mouth. Fishing from the top, fishing from the bottom with your cheap cane pole. And then, again, a hot dog, a piece of bread, a piece of cheese, and a you know number 10, number 12, number 8 hook, anywhere in there. Not including your gas, not including your fishing license. You're talking about maybe $7 US, and you could get this done. And you don't, you don't need a $40,000 bass boat and an F-350 to go fishing. You really don't. If you want to get into fishing, this is a good way to do it. I'd encourage you as a man, one, just get out and enjoy God's creation. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows us his handiwork. Get out there and enjoy it. It's beautiful. Number two, have a way to feed yourself. Have multiple ways, but at least know how to feed yourself if you just 
go to the grocery store one day and there is no food, forget about inflation. What if they just don't have food? Or what if there is no grocery store? You should be able to feed yourself and your family. Also, just quality time with someone you love. Fishing is, a, is an age-old way to do that. Also, something not electronic. Get away from looking at a screen and scrolling through Instagram. Get out there and live a little. And hopefully this encourages you to do that. If you like this episode, we may do more. We may do something on bass fishing, cat fishing, trout fishing, fishing streams, something like that. But get out there. Have a good time. Enjoy it. You get out there, and this is something I had to learn because I recently recently moved to a whole new area that I'm not familiar with with all different fish species and a whole different environment. And the first couple of times I went out, I didn't catch any fish. But you know what? I still had a good time and I still learned because I learned ways to not catch fish. And that's okay too. If you go out and don't catch any the first time or second time or whatever, or you just have a day where you don't catch any, it's still probably a nice day. Get out there. If you like this podcast, if you think this is something men ought to hear in today's age, in today's culture, if you agree with the message, I'd encourage you to support. The number one way to do that is Patreon. There'll be a link in the show notes or go to goodshepherdtraining.com. Patreon, Venmo, there's links on there. If you don't want to do any of that, literally just scroll down and hit some stars. As a thanks for listening, I'll throw out a tactical tip of the day. Now I feel like there was a lot of tips in today's episode. Here's a real easy one. If you're fishing with something like cheese, bread, a lot of things like that, something you can use to jazz up that bait a little bit is garlic. Garlic powder, garlic salt. Surprisingly, and I don't know why, a lot of fish like garlic, and a lot of these pan fish will like garlic. If you have some laying around the house, just put a little bit in your bread, on your hot dog, on your cheese you're going to fish with. It's an artificial bait. A lot of them are garlic scented, but if not, you know, test it out. Maybe put two or three in a different little bag and try and wither without garlic, see if it works better. A lot of times garlic, cheap, easy way to, you know, get a little bit more scent on that bait. Anyway, that is your tactical tip of the day for fishing. Tactical verse of the day, I already mentioned it. But if you're out there, you're almost certainly going to see a beautiful, beautiful environment. You know that saying, don't miss the forest for the trees? Well, don't miss the beauty of the stream for the fish. Fish themselves can be quite beautiful. They're a beautiful part of God's creation. But don't just get so focused on catching fish that you forget to take a breath and look around. and Watch the water running over the rocks. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows us his handiwork. Thanks for listening and have a blessed day.